Today, I want to talk about this idea of randomness. I feel like this is a thing most people just assume to be true. We assume that randomness exists in our world and we move about our daily lives with this in mind. For example, if you ask somebody to flip a coin and you ask, what are the chances of one side being heads and one side being tails? They will, of course, tell you it's a 50 50 chance. 50% chance heads, 50% chance tails. It's random. But now let me bring you into this thought experiment. Is this truly random? Or do we simply not have the capabilities and the understanding to predict what it will land on? Now, let's say remove the person flipping the coin. Okay? And let's replace it with a robot. This robot is able to flip up the coin at the exact same angle, with the exact same pressure, and the exact same, you know, wind, uh, you know, wind, uh, wind resistance. Everything is calculated for. And if you flip this coin, and you ask again if it's going to be heads or tails, you will 100% get every single time the thing you want. So if you're going for heads and this robot flips a coin, you will get heads a hundred percent of the time. So now this heads and tails is no longer random. You can see the study done by Dr. Percy Diakonis, or however you pronounce his name. He's a professor at Stanford and you know, him and some engineers basically made a robotic arm, you know, that flips a coin and therefore produces the results it expects. Now, let's take this one step further. Imagine a pool board. You know, a pool board, the white piece, and then you hit it with a stick, and then you hit, I don't know, 12 pieces or whatever's on the thing. It's like in a triangle shape. Okay. Now, if you hit this, uh, this pool ball into like the bigger stack, if you don't know what you're talking about, you know, or you're just looking at it from a regular point of view, you would think all these balls going are going randomly. If I hit them, well, I don't really know where they're going. They're ones popping into this, hitting into that, you know, it's random. But in fact, it's not random. You simply have not been given the knowledge to calculate where each thing is going to go. Now, if you ask somebody, or if you give somebody, a stick and you're going to say, I'm going to hit, you know, the ball with this stick at this velocity, with this pressure and this air resistance in the area. And I'm going to hit at this angle. Somebody who's very, very good at math. will be able to calculate every single place that every single ball will go to with perfect accuracy. Perfect. Now, of course, you're going to need, you know, a perfect tool set. To do this, you know, for example, at a certain point, you're going to have to, you know, round off numbers, you know, so it'll be off like very, very slightly. But if you had a perfect, you know, uh, calculator, you know, for example, now I'm not actually a calculator, but you have a perfect thing that calculates every single th like uh, mathematical point, then you will see that this is not a randomness. It's just you simply aren't, you know, seeing the pool balls for what they are, which is, you know, this hitting off this, that is not going to hit off that, and you calculate it. Now, some people will try to bring up the, the topic of quantum mechanics. And if somebody brings up this topic of quantum mechanics, you already know they have no idea what they're talking about. A famous scientist named Richard Feynman, Feynman, that's again, however you want to pronounce it, a Nobel, a Nobel Prize-winning physicist once said, if you think you understand anything about quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. So this is very profound. Somebody who's at the top of their field is telling you, oh, if somebody put, comes up to you and says they understand this, they don't. But people will bring this idea of quantum mechanics, oh, things you know, come in and out, you know, or 
uh, the, the double slit experiment. It was like, okay, it goes in, and we, we can't really observe why things come and produce certain things. It seems totally random what is happening. In fact, it's just not random. You don't have the tool set available to, with, like, with you to be able to see what's actually going on. And a lot of these people who push this idea of randomness, they do so because they don't have answers. They don't have answers for the most important questions in our world. For example, where does life come from? People throw out this idea of evolution. They throw it out with a smile on their face. An evolution, yes. This explains where we come from. This explains, you know, how humans got to the way they are, how animals they, they came to be. They evolved over, you know, billions of years, and that's where we, we are. But, you know, let's let's put up, oh, you know, aside all the, the issues with the theory itself, and we'll push it to the side. And we'll go all the way to the beginning. And then you ask this evolutionist, what about the very beginning? You know, the, this idea of evolution starts with something, and then say this something, you know, continues to, you know, evolve and, and become more advanced over time. Okay. But they can never explain what the start was. Now, this idea is abiogenesis, which is basically how life began. And there's no real understanding of, you know, where this thing began. They give you this idea of a primordial soup. Now, what does this mean? We have no idea. We have zero idea. It's just, you know, life began in this pool of water with the right chemicals and energy and, and conditions and voila. The first life. And then they take this first life and, you know, it, it, you know, duplicated over time and so on. But it's, you know, it's such a big jump, such a big gap that you try to explain something randomly happened. Yeah. With no proof, no understanding. And the sad reality is the majority of these people who push this idea of evolution and randomness that created the life we have today is because they're trying to move away from the idea of God. They're so scared of God's existence that they try to jump to every single bit of information they could try to get to to disprove God. Unfortunately, you just switch one faith with another. You know, you look at people with religion or faith, you know, and you, you look at these people, oh, you're not using your intellect. You're, you have this faith in God, you can't prove this, you know? And then they go on and they try to explain life and they just call it primordial soup. Something happened, chemicals, ah, bang, life. And there you go, we explained it, you know? Or they say, oh, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Or the start of the universe. Yeah, we have this big bang, and it was this small, super tight matter, and uh, something happened here, something happened there, and poof, the big bang, you know? But this type of thing has more faith than one who believes in God. Because God is a natural thing to believe in. You know, you ask, there, there's been studies uh, uh, done on, you know, children, babies. And they came to the conclusion that there is this inherent belief in God. So logically, it makes more sense to believe in this inherent, you know, instinct of, it, you know, humans. Rather than, you know, your lack of understanding and, you know, writing it up as... Well, this happened, life happened, uh, you know, we're not really sure, we don't know. Well, anyways, I started yapping at the end, just a little more than I wanted to. But, the premise was randomness, whether it existed or not existed. So, I hope I made a compelling case. Well, either way, you guys let me know what you think in the comments, if you have made it this far. Otherwise, goodbye.